All right, I got asked to cover some more examples of John Weary's awful translations in Jujutsu Kaisen. So if you didn't see part one, check that out. It's spoiler free, but this one is going to contain examples that are manga spoilers, so you've been warned. And before we get started, shout out to I'm Gaming for asking me to put this together. And again, if you didn't see part one, definitely go check that out because there's some of the most egregious examples in that video and it'll give you a good place to start from. Okay, so as you guys know by now, John Weary can mess up translations in a multitude of ways, but the worst offenders are where he just gets something completely wrong. And I talked about a few of those examples in part one, but here's another. This is during the Gojo Sukuna fight where Sukuna is talking about how he is using Maharaga to adapt to Gojo's abilities. In the official translation, John Weary says, I was extremely careful that Malevolent Shrine's adaptation up to that point was interrupted and not nullified. So this implies that Malevolent Shrine, his domain expansion, is somehow the thing adapting to Gojo and not Maharaga. Here in the fan translation, it's much clearer. When I activated amplification in my fight with Gojo, I paid close attention to only pause and not invalidate Maharaga's adaptation. For people that only read official, I don't even know what they thought with this panel. And honestly, I don't know what it is with Malevolent Shrine, but something about this trips John Weary up because he makes mistakes about this all of the time. In the recent chapter where Yuji awakened and uses Sukuna's curse technique for the first time, John Weary translates to this as Malevolent Shrine, which was engraved on him as Ryoman Sukuna's fully fleshed curse. Uh, but Malevolent Shrine is not the curse technique. That is the domain expansion. Shrine is the curse technique, so this is needlessly confusing, not to mention his kind of confusing use of the word curse there, but more on that in a bit. In the fan translation, it's put as this, the technique engraved upon the reincarnated body of Ryoman Sukuna, Shrine. Again, just much clearer. And here's another example of this exact same thing. In the fight with Yorozu, he translates it as Yorozu asking, what about your malevolent shrine? Which, again, if you're reading this, you think she's talking about his domain expansion, but she's not. She's referencing the fact that he has only been using Ten Shadows here. So in the fan translation, she's asking, why aren't you using your curse technique, shrine? Now to go back to the curse thing, I would say that one of the biggest misconceptions in JJK is that Sukuna is a curse. He's not. He was a human, a jujutsu sorcerer that became known as the king of curses, but he himself was not literally a curse. But John Weary and the official translation do us no favors in making that distinction. For example, here, where he is transforming into his true form, John Weary puts it as a curse taking fleshly form. Whereas in the fan translation, it's much clearer where it just says he resumes his transformation through means of incarnation. Now, I know these next examples are probably too small for you guys to read, but it's another way John Weary gets things wrong, and it's by misgendering characters. So here I've got two examples, both with Uruume and Angel. So in this top example, uh, in the official translation, John Weary has Hikari refer to Uruume as she, but Gege has never given a gendered pronoun to Uruume. It has always been they, them. And similarly with Angel, we have never had a canonical answer to Angel's original gender. Now, Angel has incarnated in a female, but here in the official, they just refer to Angel as she, whereas in the fan translation that is more accurate to the Japanese, they use uh, they, them again. So I know some of you might say this isn't a big deal, but it is because one, it's just wrong and it just shows that there is a lack of care going into actually translating the original vision. All right, so now let's talk about some examples where the translation isn't wrong per se, but it's just needlessly convoluted. No care has gone into making it coherent. For example, with Yuta Okotsu's domain expansion, John Weary translated it as authenticity in mutual love, which, yeah, you like get the idea behind those words, but it's just a really abnormal way to phrase it compared to the fan translation where it's called all-encompassing unequivocal love. It just makes way more sense, right? But it doesn't stop there. Listen to the official translation of how the domain works, and apologies for just reading here for a second. But John Weary puts it as, it selects one curse technique from among those he has copied and stockpiled and grants it to the barrier as a can't miss tech technique. The other curse techniques inhabit the katana within his domain at random. Only a kotsu can draw upon their effects. 
Even Akotsu doesn't know which curse technique is in a particular katana until he takes it in hand. Each katana disappears after it releases its curse technique, but the number of swords is unlimited. So again, you can get what that's saying, but just compare it to the fan translation, which says, this allows him to choose any one of his copied techniques to imbue the barrier with its sure hit effect. His remaining copied techniques are scattered randomly among the katanas within his domain. Only Akotsu can utilize them, but not even he knows which katana contains which technique until he grasps it for the first time. While each katana can only be used once, their number is infinite. I mean, to me, there's just no question on which of those is easier to understand. And I bet if you walked up to random people and asked them to pick, hey, which of these do you think is the fan translation and which do you think is the official? I bet like 90% of people would get it wrong. And here's another example that's just confusing and just not worded as well as it could be. So John Weary phrases it like this in the official. Why does it irritate me to see others dedicated to an ideal? They remind me of someone I knew a thousand years ago. Have I changed during that time? the boy. That's right, you. So the way this is positioned, to me, makes it seem as if Yuji is the person that they remind him of from a thousand years ago, implying that Yuji could be back from the Heian era, right? And especially at the time that this came out originally, before we knew kind of the underlying connection between Sukuna and Yuji, in that he's his nephew, sort of, um, I, that's what I would take away from this, that Yuji is from a thousand years ago, and like Sukuna is putting it together, or at least we're finding that out for the first time. But that's not the implication at all here, and it becomes more clear in the fan translation, which is worded like so. Those standing before me now are but martyrs willing to die for their ideal. So just what is this irritating feeling? Men of the same stature challenged me a thousand years ago, too. Could that mean that I'm the one who's changed? So first of all, that's just way more poetically worded, right? And it makes way more sense. And he says, and you're the crux of that, brat. So he's saying that, you know, Yuji doesn't, isn't the person that he's reminded of from a thousand years ago. Yuji is just the one calling into question this irritating feeling because he's always been stacked up against people with strong ideals, but Yuji uniquely is irritating him. And here's a simpler example of this. So in Higuruma's final moments when he's tossing the sword, John Weary has him say, that's what you should do. But this doesn't make sense because he and Yuji weren't having a conversation. This is like a follow-up type of statement, right? Like, what is it that Yuji should do? Yeah, he's tossing him the sword, but you wouldn't say, that's what you should do. You would say, like, use this sword or something if that was the direction you're going, right? It's almost as if John Weary was having this statement follow up this one as if this was part of the conversation. But this is a flashback of Yuji remembering Nanami's last words to him because these are two very similar situations, right? Higuruma does not know that this is what Yuji is thinking about. So here in the fan translation, they have him say, I've done what I can, which just makes magnitudes more sense, right? It also plays perfectly into his character. You know, Higuruma has been this conflicted person throughout his entire arc, and here he has done everything he can, he fulfilled his duty, and he's tossing it to Yuji now. I've done what I can, you've got it from here, basically. So again, not like wrong per se, but just doesn't make any sense. And then finally, we have translations that aren't wrong, and they're not even confusing, but they're just kind of lame. They don't accurately portray the original, whether it's tone, poeticism, or like raw emotion. John Weary just doesn't do it justice. And there are a million examples of this type of thing, but I'll show you a couple. So, you know, when Megami uh, gets taken over by Sukuna, Yuji, after his kind of like rage moment, gets up and says, you should be the one trying to stifle this misery, which, cool, but let me show you the fan translation. Then let's see if you can chew up me and my suffering. That's just a thousand times more badass. Here's another example where Sukuna is talking about Yorozu when she was telling him he didn't know about love. In John Weary's version, he says, I got the point, but it still hurt. She had the wrong guy. As if Sukuna's fifis were hurt because Yorozu told him he didn't understand love, which that is so absolutely the opposite of his character. Now compare that to the fan translation, which doesn't assassinate Sukuna's character. I understand what she meant, but still, it's quite annoying to hear somebody prattle on about what you don't know. And then y'all already know about this one because we talked about it in part one, but just the removal of all aura, right? But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.